The Boring Company is a very confusing topic to talk about because people don't really get what it does and its business is intertwined with many confusing subjects such as Hyperloop, the flamethrower, the tunnel boring machine and so on and so forth. Before Elon's press announcement last month, people are even confused as to whether or not Elon is serious about it. After all, it's called The Boring Company and Elon is reportedly spending only 2-3% to of his time on it. Therefore, the first job in explaining The Boring Company should be to untangle some of those terms for you. So let's start with Hyperloop. Hyperloop was proposed as an alternative mode of transportation by Elon Musk and his team of engineers in early 2013. It essentially is an ultra high speed underground transit system in which passengers ride through a vacuum tunnel system in self-driving electric pods and pressurized cabin at speed of more than 600 miles per hour. It sounds really cool, but the concept is not exactly new. It draws inspiration heavily from a similar concept called Vactrain that was proposed in the 1900s. As the name suggests, it is a train that runs in vacuums, or rather, partial vacuum. To understand Hyperloop, you need to understand firstly what stops our train from going faster, air resistance and friction. Hyperloop is basically a mode of transportation that alleviates those two things. Suck out the air to alleviate air resistance and reduce friction by using air bearings and induction motors. In Elon's alpha paper describing his ambition of Hyperloop, he asserts that if done right, Hyperloop could be a legitimate alternative to short distance transportations, having a speed on par with aeroplanes. It however would not be a feasible alternative in long haul trips competing with a quiet supersonic aircraft because of the need for new infrastructure as Elon asserted in the alpha paper. So what does Boring Company have to do with Hyperloop? Well, first of all, the Boring Company is really just a boring company for now a company that bores tarnals. There is a lot of hype surrounding how groundbreaking Boring Company could be, but I have not seen any technical details outlining the tunnel boring machine as a superior machine compared to its competitions. However, it did go through three evolutions. The original tunnel boring machine called Godot was a conventional machine that Boring Company bought for research purposes. The second generation machine called Linestorm is a modified tunnel boring machine that is reportedly two to three times faster than conventional machines. And finally, the machine in development right now is called Proofrock and is designed to be 10 times faster than conventional machines. According to Boring Company's website, it has three product lines, loop transportation system, conduit tunnels, and water tunnels. So basically, Hyperloop is one of the possible future projects for the Boring Company, but the Boring Company itself is a tunneling and construction company. Hyperloop is one of the applications, Boring Company is the means to build those applications. We're nowhere near building a Hyperloop just yet because of many technical hurdles, but it is believed to be possible. So before we start digging deeper into the Boring Company, let's get some other confusing terms out of the way. Is Boring Company a, a hat company? No, neither is it a flamethrower company. Chances are, if you're on the internet, you've seen Boring Company's name connected to the sales of Flamethrower and the Boring Hat. Those are means for Boring Company to raise fundings. They're in no ways related to the Boring Company's businesses. But hey, who's it to say that sales of the Flamethrowers or the Boring Hats is not a legit way of raising money? The Boring Company has raised in total $11 million with these sales. And then comes the most critical question of the day. If Boring Company is just a tunneling company, why does it deserve so much attention? Well, aside from Elon being a marketing machine, whatever he touches, people love. The Boring Company is the first collaboration between SpaceX and Tesla. The team that works at Boring right now came from SpaceX in the first place, and Elon is utilizing Tesla's EV technology to power those huge tunnel boring machines. Currently, SpaceX and Tesla are easily the biggest engineering companies attracting top-notch engineers from all over the world. I'm sure their unique perspective would bring new blood to this very traditional industry. Secondly, Boring Company is also a pioneer in loop construction. Although we're not yet ready for Hyperloop, Boring is building a loop, which is a slower version of Hyperloop for Chicago. It will look something like this, with pods of electric cars running on skates, leaving and entering the station. 
since we're now in the area of engineering, let's bring on the numbers. Here we're talking about three categories of considerations. Cost, number of passengers, as well as speed, based on the proposal Boring Company produced for the Chicago government. It's expected to be able to handle nearly 2,000 passengers per direction per hour, with cars leaving every 30 seconds to two minutes. Assuming this system runs 15 hours a day, it would handle, therefore, 30,000 passengers per direction per day. This proposed cost of constructing the entire system is around $1 billion. That is only a fraction of what typically will cost a 17-mile transportation system in the United States. From the passenger side, the projected cost per ticket is around $20 to $25 per ride, and the train will go as fast as 125 to 150 miles per hour, which is around 230 kilometers per hour. This is where the comparison comes in. The Chinese now have the world's most elaborated high-speed railway system. As shown in a recent Wendover Productions video, it has more high-speed railway than the rest of the world combined. The Beijing Tianjin High Speed Rail, for example, has a construction cost of around 20 million US dollars per kilometer. That's 540 million for a 17 mile long high speed rail system. It also has a top speed of 200 miles per hour. From this perspective, if Boring Company were to compete with a Chinese contractor hypothetically, it has to win with technology, not cost. That's where the technology of Loop System comes back in. The loop system is not just about mass transit. It's also about sending cars from one place to another, as Elon showed in the recent announcement. Cars in the loop system will be able to travel at easily over 100 miles per hour, which unlocks tremendous efficiency for the American transportation system in particular. This mixture of private vehicles with centralized public dispatching system is, I think, the true value of the borrowing company. So here's the thing. One thing people fail to acknowledge about Elon Musk is his ability to identify really stagnant and conventional industries that has a certain set of norms that is, that, that is preventing the industry from innovating. If we look at the space industry, for example, it's basically stagnant in the past 30 years because of the uh, enormous control of two big companies over uh, the construction of the engines, the construction of the rocket itself, those companies, I, I won't name names, but you guys probably know who those two companies are. And if, if we're talking about uh, the automobile industry, the industry that Tesla is in right now, it is much more competitive. It is a much more competitive industry than the space industry. But if you look at it in the past 50 years, there basically are very little, well, I wouldn't say very little, but but a small amount of innovation in terms of the technology that is running in the car. Uh, most innovation happened, especially with the Japanese revolution, from the supply chain side of it, right? You're, you have a much more sophisticated and complicated supply chain that drives down the cost, that increases the quality of the car, which is a great thing. But it doesn't mean it's a great thing for the car itself. It doesn't mean it's a great thing for technology. So in this case of Boring Company that we're talking about today, I think the, the same thing is happening right now. It is an industry that is uh, mostly based on relationship, right? If you have a, a good relationship with uh, upstream suppliers, downstream suppliers, those sort of things, then you perhaps can get things done a little bit faster. If you have a good relationship with people who are managing a bunch of construction workers, perhaps you can get things done faster. But now that Boring Company, the company that is founded by Elon Musk, has entered the scene, I think there is a tremendous uh, potential for disruption that uh, is going to be happen for this particular industry that is uh, conventional, just like the automobile industry and the space industry. And also, uh, I also want to bring attention to you that the possibility that Boring Company presents for what Elon Musk already do for SpaceX and for Tesla, right? Many people, many of my audiences has also reminded me that uh, tunneling technology could be a viable technology for Mars colonization that Elon has always been wanted to do, 
right? On Mars, how do you transport people from one place to another? Perhaps、uh, using a tunnel, using especially a, a vacuum tunnel, right? On Mars, you don't even have to create a vacuum because the the air is so thin over there. Everything you basically create a tunnel, then it's a vacuum tunnel automatically. So this is obviously a synergy between SpaceX and.、Uh, Boring Company. There are also synergy, obvious synergy between the Boring Company and、uh, and Tesla, right?、Uh, how the battery technology should be used in this industry. How elect electric cars technology should be used in this industry. I mean,、uh, the electric pods that are used in the loop is obviously a good application for it already. So we can see obvious synergy between Boring Company and SpaceX. And boring company and Tesla. So this is,、uh, I think, the genius of what's going on right now. I don't know, and I don't claim to know that I, that this is going to succeed in the future.、Uh, there is a possibility that this is not going to succeed. And if you're comparing to the Japanese, the Germans, and especially the Chinese right now, this might not even be the most,、uh, most,、uh, the cheapest option out there. But. I think what the technology and the potential represents is something that we are really excited about. Hey, thank you all so much for watching. There really isn't a good way to talk about it, but I just want to give my sincere appreciation to my Patreon supporters for sticking with me over this entire time, and、uh, I want to thank you guys for.、Uh, Giving me all those suggestions for future videos, and also giving me feedback for previous videos. Right? Thank you all so much for that. And for those of you guys who has not supported me on Patreon, I encourage you guys to do so. Just head on to Patreon.com/CuriousElephant if you want to contribute to the future videos or、uh, give me some feedback for previous videos. I'll see you guys there.